I am a huge fan of MVVM, whether I'm developing apps with WPF, Xamarin Forms, .NET MAUI, WinUI, or any other XAML framework. I like the idea of sort of separating my code base from my user interface code base. However, as you develop more and more applications with MVVM, just like any other framework and architecture pattern, you got to write a bunch of code. Well, don't worry, because now with the community toolkit for .NET, there are source generators for MVVM, which means you basically don't have to write anything at all, and you let source generators take care of everything. And today, I'm going to break down how to remove all that code and get in to source generators that are brand new in this toolkit. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another video this time around MVVM source generators. Now, if you don't know anything about MVVM, I'm not going to break down the MVVM 101, but I have a video. It's right up there down in the show notes. There is a XAML 101 and an MVVM 101 and MVVM is model view view model. Now, when you're doing this architecture pattern, normally if you have your XAML user interface and your view models, and those are loosely coupled and there's properties that have a data binding framework in between. Now, this data binding framework is something like Don in Maui, Xamarin Forms, Avalonia, WinUI, WPF, anything that's really XAML, there's this glue that sits in the middle of it. Now, to make that glue and those properties update, like when you type into a text field that updates other things, this MVVM needs to notify properties and you need to send these commands when you're doing different button clicks. And that obviously generates some codes. Now, you can write this code manually, but there, of course, are tons of different, you know, different libraries out there to help you, including MVVM helpers, which I'll put a link to up here. I did a video on that, which is a library from me that helps you write less code uh, when you're doing MVVM. But there's, of course, tons of other ones out there. But there is a brand new .NET community toolkit that introduces source generators. And source generators enable you to write less code because they generate the code for you. And this thing is astonishing. So I'm going to break it down and get into it. So let's do it. All right. So let's take a look at an application sample here, which is a very simple app where I have first name, last name over here. And if I say James Monty Magno, it updates right here. And if I click submit, it will actually click a submit button and it'll do some debug information and things like that. So here I have a data property binding to a first name and last name. Whenever I type in here, it updates here. So that's kind of nice. We get that sort of MVVM goodness. So let's see how this thing was generated. The first thing that we can see in my XAML is that I have some entries. So we have uh, entry first name, last name, and this magic binding property. Now this is a .NET MAUI application. So you might see things like XBind or other things like that. They all work very similar. Over here we have binding first name, which means there's a property in my view model, which I have set to the binding context here in the XAML, you might have dependency injected it, you might have set it in the code behind, wherever it is, there is a property back there that is named first name, last name, and also full name as well. Now over here, we can see that I have a button that also has a command, which is submit command. So you might take that information, submit it up, and then send it off to a backend. Now I just implemented standard generic, just I'm going to implement MVVM by myself. I'm not going to use any frameworks, any libraries, and we can see what that looks like over here. In my main view model, I've implemented, I notify property changed, and that is the first implementation of how to raise notifications that things have changed. And that is very, very simple. Basically here we have this property changed. It can take in a property name. And then the user interface is going to subscribe to this property changed event. When things change, it uses kind of reflection or magic to say, hey, this property of first name or full name updated. So go ahead and see if any user interface controls are data bound to it and go update the new properties. So if we see here, we have some very simple stuff like first name. Over here, it has a getter and a setter. Here we have on property change. So if I set this, it's going to raise a notification that first name has changed. And I'm also saying, hey, go raise a property change notification for full name. I do the same exact thing for last name, because if they update the first name or the last name, you want to update that full name. 
This full name is just a getter, so it doesn't do anything special. It says return first name plus last name there. And that's it. That's pretty much it. That's pretty cool. And I use this little uh, caller member name, so that's why I don't have to pass in the, the name if I don't want to. So that's kind of a nice little trick there. Now, the other thing that's in here is this I command. And the I command is what happens when this button is clicked. So that I command is sort of a contract that says, do this when I click this and be enabled in certain scenarios. So over here, I have a simple submit command and uh, I initialize it here. I use this question mark, question mark equals that says, if this is null, then create a new command, which uh, this command is just part of .NET MAUI. It could also come from other frameworks too. Uh, and then use the submit over here. Um, so that kind of binds that stuff up. So that way your sort of business logic isn't exposed to your interface. It's exposed to a contract. And I'm just outputting some information here, which is nice. So that's sort of it. Um, but let's get rid of all this stuff because this is shenanigans. I don't like any of it. And I want to get rid of all of it pretty much. So we're going to do that. We're just going to get rid of all of this different stuff inside of here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a NuGet package over here and it's a currently of this time of recording when I'm recording in March 2022 is a pre-release and we're going to browse for community toolkit.mvvm. This used to be the Microsoft community toolkit or the Windows community toolkit, but basically it is a new community toolkit.mvvm. There's a bunch of them um, that are out there uh, that do different things. And this one specifically is for MVVM. So we're going to install this here. And this will work in anything. It doesn't have to be done in Maui. As long as you're using Visual Studio 2022, uh, it'll be have access to the source generators over there. And we just installed it. Cool. All right. So first things first that we might want to do is actually get rid of this property changed. So if I go ahead and delete this and delete this property change it over here and get rid of a bunch of stuff. We're just going to try to delete a bunch of name stuff over here. Just delete a bunch of stuff. I can come in and say, I notify property changed up here, property. And when I bring this in, I can say using community toolkit.mvvm.component models. That's one of the very first namespaces we're going to bring in. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to say, Hey, I want you to, generate that source code for I notify property changed on here. Now we can see that there's a squiggly here and that is because the source generators create a partial class. So we're going to need to make this a partial. That's one of the really cool parts of, um, of C sharp is you can have these partial classes over there, which is really, really nice. So again, we've removed a bunch of stuff here, so we'll get back to that here. But so far I actually noticed that it actually has the same exact stuff, the same exact signature model. And you're like, where did that source code come from? Well, if I come over to my dependencies on any of these, we'll have these uh, analyzers. Let me pull this out a little bit. And this is where our source code is going to be generated. So we can see here's all of the source code generators that are available. So we have observable object, observable property, all these different things. So this is I notify property change. And let me just open that up. Check this out. Now this is auto generated. It's nullable enabled. This is creating super sleek streamlined code for me automatically. So I don't have to write any of it at all. It creates everything that I need. It does equality operators, it does property changes. It does all sorts of things inside of here. It's just absolutely beautiful. Like it writes all this code, all this stuff for me automatically. And it even gives me these nice little things right here, which is set property. So you can actually pass it an old value and a new value, and you can sort of really optimize this code. So it sets all this stuff for you automatically. I mean, this is just really, really cool. So it is highly, highly optimized. So for example, here, if I want to say set property over here, we can see that it actually takes in a uh, ref of the field. So I could say first name. And then I could give it the new value over here. Now what this is going to do, if I hover over it, it's going to pass me a bool. And this is really cool because it is going to not only check uh, to see if first name has changed, it is then uh, going to set it and then call the property changed and return a bool. 
So this is nice because now with a little code at all, I've optimized this code. I don't have to write any of this code, set properties coming in automatically. And what this does is it enables me to say, if the property changed, update it, but I also want to update this full name too. So that is super duper slick, right? So all I did was put I notify property change on here. It implemented it automatically and it's good to go. Now there are some things in here, like you can bring in observable object as well. An observable object will have many of those same exact properties. This is uh, another one here um, that uh, basically comes in from the component model that, that implements I notify property changed, I notify property changing as well. So just know that while you can add this attribute, I notify property changed over here, it can also be an observable object. And this is an important thing because imagine a world where you needed to, I don't know, come in and say like public class, my data item. Okay. You might, for example, say my data item and you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Well now does this thing implement? I notify property change. Is there some other thing? Do I want to implement on this base class? I can't, I can't do something like observable object as well. Cause you can't inherit from multiple things. So what you can do is just add this little attribute here and it will tally on to it. So that's kind of nice as you can sort of add that onto there, get the, I notify property changed, get the, my data item there and you're good to go. So if you have like a database thing, totally good, but this also still looks like quite a lot of code. So we actually want to get rid of all of this code. So let's literally do that. Okay. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of, um, some of this stuff here. So let's get rid of this here. I'm going to just do observable object because why not? That's going to be my base here. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of these properties. Okay. Now all we have here is first name and last name, private strings. That's it. Okay. Now here's where the magic of source generators comes in. I'm going to blow your mind. All you got to do is say observable property. Now notice that first name just went away. Okay. Watch this observable property. Last name is here too. Now you're saying like, where are these things coming from James? Cause now watch this. I can say public main view model, like give it a constructor. I can say this dot and I have first name in the IntelliSense. Like, where did it come from? Well, that is the magic, my friends, of the source generators. If we come over here under observable property, I can look at the main view model. So they're broken down here and it's generated all of that code for me automatically right there. So I no longer have to worry about creating all that code, doing all that stuff, checking over here, it checks all the equality, does all this stuff for me automatically and calls the on property changing and on property change for me automatically, which is kind of amazing. But wait, you're saying, well, James, how do you update this full name? Because you've added these magical properties. How are you going to tell it that whenever you change first name to also go ahead and do this down here? Well, you add another attribute on here. You can say also notify change for, or can execute for. This is cool. I can say name of in here. I'm going to say full name. All right. I'm going to add it down here too. So what this is going to say is make this an observable property. And then if that changes also notify full name as well. Okay. Now let's go back into that source code and we can see here, check this out, check this out. We have our first name here. But notice now we have two on property changes and is going to call into first name and full name automatically for me. Now there's a bunch of gobbledygook stuff going on here, right? This internals, blah, blah, blah. But that's because all this source code has been generated for me behind the scenes. Pew. Amazing. It's just so cool. Now, last thing here. Okay, what about commands? This is uh, my other favorite part. Okay. Normally you'd have to create the command create the public command, set it all up here. No, you just delete this here. All right, let's bring back in our, let's bring in our system diagnostics here. You just create your methods 
over here, okay? And then all you gotta do is just say I command, right? This is an observable property. This is an I command. You're gonna now bring in community toolkit mvvm.input. And just like that, if I come back over into my source generators and I look over here, I'm gonna have um, a brand new source generator for I command generator. And here's my submit. Look at this. It's an I relay command. So that's its implementation of I command. And it creates all that code for me automatically. So I don't have to call that anymore. It knows automatically that that is my submit. It is a private void. It's gonna handle it all. Now all I'm gonna do is run it again, all right? And I've dramatically, look at this. I've, basically there's like no code at all inside of here. I'm just listing my properties, putting it in here, and all that source code is generated for me automatically. Now, if I come back over and see my running application, let's bring it over here. I can say James Monty Magno. Sure enough, when I hit click, well, let's debug this and actually see what's going on over here. We can actually add a breakpoint to make sure, you know, I don't know if you believe me, that's actually calling this. So let's go ahead and bring this back over here. So we get James Monty Magno, hit submit. Look at that. Hits my breakpoint and my I command. Everything is implemented automatically. Now you're saying, James, this is amazing. But what if I have something like an async task, right? What if, what if I need this to be asynchronous? I need to make a web request. Well, it's totally fine. You just, I just did it. It's done. Check this out. When I go into the source code that was generated, it's an I async relay command. It's all done for me automatically. It's already implemented 100%. If it's async, it just does it for you automatically. You no longer need to rely on MVVM helpers or other things. It's all built in 100% right there for you. Now, I am literally just scraping the surface of this community toolkit for .NET when it comes to MVVM. Now, you need to definitely check out the blog post, which I'll link below from the team behind this that's working with the community to add all sorts of new stuff. There's all sorts of ridiculously awesome stuff inside of here. And this is just one of the libraries that are part of the community toolkit. Now, I also want you to check out the .NET YouTube. I'm actually going to have Sergio on from the team that was working on this to talk about the entirety of what's in the .NET community toolkit. So definitely head over there um, and subscribe to the .NET YouTube because we put out videos over there as well, official ones there. It's going to be really awesome. But I hope that you really enjoyed this and realize like MVVM no longer needs to be super complex, right? You don't need to write all of this source code. You don't need to do all of these different things. You can just write a few little attributes and everything will be automatically generated for you. I'm using this in all of my projects going forward. File new, I'm creating a down at Maui workshop and we're just gonna teach it this way. Why teach it the old way? You have to scaffold all this code right here. Boom, you're totally good to go. So dive into the documentation, which I'll link below over here. And honestly, if you are looking to get started in MVVM and you're like, wow, that looks amazing, but I wanna know the basics. Again, check out the videos up over here down there for MVVM and XAML 101. But honestly, go check this thing out. It blows my mind. And if you like this at all, or if your mind is blown, leave comments below. And of course, if you like this thing, give this video a thumbs up so other people find it. That is the best way to support the channel besides actually not only subscribing to the channel, which would be awesome. But if you like and share this video, it helps other people find it. And then it goes into the YouTube algorithm of goodness. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am just enthralled and just blown away by this library. And I can't wait for new versions of it to come up and for it to hit stable release, which by the time this thing comes out, who knows if it already has. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, as I always say. And I can't wait to check you on the next one. So until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching.